players of Red Shadow Legends are spoiled for options when it comes to choosing this champion that they want to take into battle or build to their maximum 60 level. So it can kind of get overwhelming to choose between your rares, epics or even legendary champions when you have a lot of options. You don't even know which ones to keep, which ones are not worth keeping, which ones are trash. So in this video, I want to take time to focus on the rare champions because as a newer player to raid, that's the champions that you get the most of the rare category. This rare champions of is it blue or green blue the blue borders so if you do have a lot of these champions in your inventory or your champions index where you don't have unlimited storage you agree with me that they easily get filled up especially with two stars one stars when you're always um opening mystery shards so in this video i want to take a look at which of these rare champions are worth keeping so you don't use them as food when you're trying to level up other champions but when you do get duplicates of them and all that of course you can use them as food all right before we do start though there are three ways that people generally go about raid when it comes to rare champions the first method is when you do get a rare champion you ask yourself will this champion be part of your team right will it be in your dungeon team in your um, arena team or in your clan boss team anywhere if the answer to that question is a no the first thing you think about is just take the champion out of the um, game, right? Use him as food for other champions. No. The second thing that you can do with those champions, apart from being used as um, somebody to be in your teams, is as a faction guardian. So that's another reason why you want to keep some of these champions. As a faction guardian, you can see if you go to your banner lot right there. I don't have any rest for banner lots. I think I do have for dark elves. Yes. See, I have all the rares put in there for dark elves so this is another way that you can use rare champions so that's the second way the third one that i'm really really focused on is for end game content i'm talking about champions that you don't necessarily need in your dragon team you don't need in your fire knight team you don't need in any teams that you're currently working with but you just want to keep a copy of them for something like doom tower secret rooms for something like faction wars you know those rare champions you like i know you're not gonna be in my main teams but i just want to keep you in case i don't get you again because the truth is sometimes you use the rare champion you get and you never get that champion again you'll be pulling mystery shards and ancient shards you will rarely get them again um another reason why you want to keep this champion is if a fusion requires you to do so so from the rising fusion especially i don't currently have the rising fusion open here but you know what i'm talking about when you come to your rising fusion you can see some rare champions that are necessary for you to, that are needed to complete the fusion so that's another reason why you want to keep them you're not using them for any teams or anything like that but they are part of a fusion so you keep those rare champions one copy each at least you don't have to keep two or three or four unless you're using it for the faction guardians so now that i've explained all the ways you can use rare champions in the game before you use them as food that's why i explained all this i'm gonna be calling a lot of these champions trash 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 right tell you which one to keep and which one to just take out but when it falls into a category for rising fusion and i call it trash it doesn't mean that you should use a champion for rising fusion and just use it as food so i just wanted to explain how you other ways you can use these rare champions besides what i'm doing right now which is for content like for um beating content in the game so i'm going to be talking about the ones that we can use in faction wars the one we will use in end game and the one that will serve you in your early game also let me head back to the um index and let's start for the banner lords so if we scroll down to the banner lords right now in terms of rare champions that are good i will only take the best i'm not here to keep rare champions that are sort of sort of good no i'll only take the best so the first one that catches my eye is valerie a lot of things have been said about this champion in the early game if your kill is dying in the campaign stages 50 um five star kill is dying or you're in even level 40 kill is dying she at level 30 can make it happen but nobody built this valerie because everybody has a war priest so i wouldn't recommend you build two support champions if you already have a war priest let your war priest be your support but if for some weird reason you don't have a war priest then maybe she can be your support so this champion can also help in early game dungeon content but she doesn't really go far so it's not a champion i would take to 60 but in the early game of 40 50 she can help you a little bit if you don't have any other supports that are better than her 
So that's my verdict on that champion. I'll only call the good ones. You see me ignoring crossbowman, grandmaster, and all this just because they are trash. So <laughs> I'd say I will be saying trash a lot. So these ones are trash. And let's see which one that, again that will catch my eye right now. None except Daga. That's the next one that catches my eye. If you do not know what Daga does, she's like a war maiden, right? A war maiden. So a lot of people go for the war maiden play to place decreased defense on the enemy. AOE decreased defense. But she has an AOE decreased defense, has a 50% chance of placing it, and that's when people don't like her. This is why people prefer war maiden over her. She has a 50% chance of placing this decreased defense. Even if, if you book her to the full max, right? She still has a 75% chance of placing it. That means there are one or two of the enemy champions who will not have decreased defense on them. But if you do have a war maiden, war maiden is better than her at placing decreased defense because war maiden places it at 100% when fully booked. So that's the major difference between a dagger and a war maiden. If you have both of them and you're thinking, why you should, should you go for war maiden? Is because of this 75% chance of placing it. So, although there's a little advantage Daga has over War Maiden in the sense that she is Void Affinity. Void Champions can place their um, debuffs on all champions without getting a weak hit. So, there's no affinity issues. War Maiden is Force Affinity. When she goes against Spirit Affinity, she, she might not be able to place it when she gets a weak hit. So that's the advantage that Daga has. Daga also comes with a skill that some people say is good. I guess critical hit decreases Daga's stun meter by 4%. So whenever she hits, she decreases the stun meter by 4%. So it's like a <laughs> that mastery that reduces stun meter. So it's not quite like an Amiga's stun meter reduction, but it can help you a little bit. So I don't know. Decrease attack on one, one enemy is not that useful. So those are her two main uh, skills. All right, that's from the banner lot. I'll try to make this one short. I promise I'll not make it drag on. We just want to help the new guys out there figure out which champions they should use as food and which ones they should keep. So this video is tailored towards those new players who are just coming into Raid Shadow Legends. Hope you enjoy this little video I'm putting together for you and watch my other content also. All right, we are currently in the High Elves faction and the first first person right there is apothecary that's a weird way to pronounce it i know but apothecary i <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but yeah he's the best rare champion that can that you can get in the first week or not in the second week the first best rare champion you can get why i'm saying the best even if you get a frozen banshee a poisoner in your first week she might not be able to take you all the way to brutal or whatever you know so he is somebody that you need in those early dungeon stages where you're trying to beat content and do missions and objectives and ad ad uh, quest and all that so he is a healer single target healer but still yet so fast because he also boosts your entire team so this is the skill i'm talking about the heal 35 percent heal when booked up, it can also increase on a two-ton cooldown when it's booked also. And then increase speed in all, for all allies and fuel stun meter by 15%. He just makes your team go almost twice as, as fast as they should. So he also brings an aura of defense, 25%, I mean 21% in all dungeons. Which means if you put him as your leader slot, instead of using your kill or your other champions as leaders for 15% uh, HP, use him as defense aura. Um, and he will keep your team alive so he's awesome this is a champion i would take to 60 no doubt especially if you're in the early game now for later game when you have better healers who do a better job you might not want to take him to 60 if you're already in the end game all right um the next champion i can take note of here that you should totally keep is harris i know she's farmable but people, it's better to just have a copy of her in your vault. You're not going to use her right now in the early game, but she's one of the champions that work well with a Demeter comp, an unkillable comp. So when you pull a Demeter, when you pull a um, Seeker and all the required um, champions, then you can build a team without going to look for an Harry. So if you do have this champion from the campaign, you can farm her, I think it's from campaign 6 level, level 6 of the campaign. She's easily obtainable but i suggest you have a copy in your inbox 
she's not a champion you use everywhere in the game she just have a specific niche right now which is for um Demeter unkillable comes the next one i should also take note of is reliquary tender now this is a void rare so that be a little bit difficult to get but when you do pull this champion she has a revive and a cleanse so a lot of people use this champion right now for the is it the the doom tower there's a spider a nether spider of the doom tower which places poisons on you and she just cleanses everything so this is easily obtainable than other cleansers that's what i think in terms of the rare or epic category so if you do have the champion build her into the doom tower nether spider to do that cleansing or even the dragon i've seen her back in the day being used in the dragon you know when the dragon puts all those poisons on you she just cleanses everything <laughs> so she's kind of useful and she can also bring one champion back to life yes she has a revive although it's on a very long cooldown but if you use her it's gonna serve you well i guess all right so that's the heal and the revive for reliquary tender and awesome champion totally worth taking to 60 for the end game but not for the early game though for early game she's fine being at 50 i guess she has a heal a little bit all right i'm done with high elves let's head over to sacred order hopefully this one won't be too long let's rush it up a little bit now you see me skipping out on this um um the default champions right etel kale and all that i'm gonna skip out on them because we already know you only need one of them to be built which is the first one you built and you don't need more um which other champion is worth keeping in this category of secret order is templar templar one copy of templar besides being used for a fusion is needed for a fusion right also keep another copy of him because you might need to build um a team or a single champion that can beat boomer Yes, his champion is known for being used for Boomer. That's what that's from the um, what do you call it now? Doom Tower boss. So whether you're doing it on normal or hard mode, he's a champion that people usually build for Boomer. So keep one copy of him in case you eventually want to do that. But if you don't, if you're not interested in Doom Tower, he's not that useful anywhere else in the game. All right. Um, I don't think there's any other person here worth noting. Justicia is needed for a fusion, so you might want to keep him. Make sure you check out your fusion champions before you use them as food. That's the mentions for secret order. Let's head over to the next faction is barbarian faction. And let's check the home of war maiden. Now this faction has some awesome rares that is going to take you even all the way to the end game. So war maiden is the first one to mention because of her decreased defense right here. AOE decreased defense, 100% chance when booked better than the other void champion we talked about. So that's the reason we use her because of this decrease defense. A 60% decrease defense, not even low 30% decrease defense. When the enemy's defense are decreased, you do more da damage. So she's easily obtainable from the campaign. If you're currently beating campaign stages, you can find her, I think it's from stage. Is it eight also? I forget which one, but she's right there. Barbarian faction, Deadlands. That's it. Deadlands. Farm a war maiden. And you can also farm copies of her from that same campaign stage until you use copies of her to book herself now the next mention that you the one next one i should mention is soul bound boya now this champion is somebody i used for my early spider when i was trying to beat spider 15 all the way to spider um 20 right you do have an amiga who is easily built to decrease the tometer of the spider but she comes in there with an extra you know tometer reduction it's on a longer cooldown but when the Amiga's Tomita is not yet, or the boss is getting close, she just nukes and totally depletes the Tomita of the spider. So that's one place I've been. I know this champion can be useful. Also, this is also useful for the Fire Knight. The Fire Knight, you know, you need to keep his Tomita down. But she does have an AOE on the A1 and single target on the A2, single target here. Because of this AOE A1, she's a perfect candidate for the stun set. But we are not talking about that for the early game. But for early game, she's just used as somebody to fully deplete the tomb meter of the spider. So I suggest you keep a copy of her. Now for end game content, Doom Tower stages that requires you to build rares with attack. This is where you also use her. So she's not farmable in the campaign. So I suggest you keep one or two copies of her. Is somebody is a champion? I currently have two of her for Doom Tower end game content. So for early game spider for end game 
Doom Tower, and then of all faction wars. What am I saying? She's awesome for the faction wars. She's still in my faction wars team, despite having me, me having a lot of epics or legendaries from this barbarian faction. So I'm not hyping this champion too much because she does damage or stuff. I'm just saying she's required to beat Doom Tower secret rooms, or she's somebody who helped me when I didn't have a lot of options to control the spider or you can also build her as a spider tank because whenever she hits with the a1 she can heal with a life steal so but we don't need her for anything else in the game all right that's the mentions for the barbarian i thought there'll be more i wouldn't recommend you build up mark i see some people using mark for elite dungeon i mean elite clam boss it's not worth it because you can't even tune her to block the stone because you don't have the gear to make it happen by then so I try to use this champion to put heal reduction on the um what do you call these bosses in the keep right potion keeps decrease defense heal reduction 100% because of a mission required me to I put her at level 40 and I got it done I didn't use her for anything else after that all right the next one is ogreen tribes we're going we're moving along you're finding out which rare champions to keep rock tooth is needed for a fusion so keep a copy of, copy of him in your vault for that fusion. I don't see any other rares right here that are worth keeping except Bellower. Boom. This champion is awesome because he has an A1 um, that does um, AoE damage, A2 AoE damage and also A3 AoE damage. He's a perfect campaign farmer if you don't have fellhound or somebody who can do it better so in the early stages he does require a lot of crit a lot of crit damage to make that happen but i suggest you use them as an end game campaign farmer not an early game campaign farmer in the early games you just use your normal starter champion and it's fine but in a stun set i use him for a lot of general content he's not a champion that just sits there and you don't use him this is a rare champion you find yourself using in doom tower using in faction wars using almost everywhere in the game especially if you're early game to the dragon i've seen him in dragon a lot locking out enemies stunning enemies so your um, champions can get an easier time on those waves so he's the only champion i can point out here rock beast is um, needed for the fusion so keep a copy of him when you finally get him i think he's obtainable from the bazaar in 3v3 arena all right that's for ogin tribe lizard men let's go over here for rare lizard men i don't see anyone here that is useful except metal shaper remember we're talking about only the top tier ones that are totally worth building so metal shaper is somebody i would take to 50 because he places a shield on a two-ton cooldown which is required for the scarab boss that's the only place you will use this champion so it sounds like a very specific niche right so it's not a champion you get and start building no you wait till you want to beat the scarab that's when you build him that's when you bring him out of the vault so keep a copy of him in the vault now if you already have ep epics like lodric falcon hearts or even miscreated monster you might not need those his shield so other those other champions put shield in a longer time or even in a two-ton just like him so there are epics who can do it but if you do not have them in the early game if you just want to beat those early stages of the scarab he's your guy place a shield on all your allies and make them hit the scarab and they don't get retaliation all right he's not a champion i will take to 60 though i'm lucky to have lodric falcon heart so i never needed to build him but i've seen a lot of content creators using him for scarab normal or even hard he has to be very fast to make his job easier though i don't see any other lizard men that are worth taking to 60 not even not even for faction wars um skinwalkers let's go over here down here there are not a lot of rares with the skinwalkers why but guess what my two favorite rare champions are in the skinwalkers category i'm talking about graybeard and his brother so if you do not know what graybeard does this is his main skill attacks all enemies has a 25 percent chance of placing freeze it, a low chance i know but he also places a shield and counter attack on himself you know so he's an awesome champion to control the waves he doesn't have a lot of control if you don't put some masteries on him and increase this chance though so he's an awesome awesome champion for the early game now Granhorn also has a similar control for the waves but his control is better because he provokes on all enemies so why graybeard is has a very low chance of freezing them 
now Hon has a hundred percent chance of placing that provoke for at least one turn. Then he also goes on killable on this second turn. So he's an awesome champion. I use right now in the Doom Tower. Both of them are needed for Doom Tower secret rooms. So if you do not have them, you find it in almost impossible to beat that Doom Tower secret rooms. So that's why I said they are my favorite right now. In the early game, I didn't really value them. But if you bring this champion into the dragon, this is a champion that provokes all the enemies and your allies who are squishy like War Maiden, like your kill, don't get hit because he's taking all the tank and he's a defense. Oh, he's a HP based champion. So I thought it was defense based. But you need a lot of defense on him to survive the hits. So those are the two champions I would take to 60 totally without wasting time. Well, unless you need them. Wait till you need them before you take them to 60 though. Bloodhorn is needed for Ephesians, so keep a copy of him. And um, that's all. Fleshmonger, I don't think he's needed for some secret rooms, but it's not totally necessary. So that's for Skinwalkers. Ox faction, if I scroll down to the rares, they have a good sizable amount of rares. Um, in the early game, I remember Gormax doing a lot of damage in the, um, what do you call it, campaign stages, right? When you come across that stage 4. But I wouldn't recommend you build him because i know it does a lot of damage if you do put some gear on him but it's not recommended i don't see any rare right here what keeping veteran is hyped a lot but i have never used him for any content in the game that other people could not do but i see some people say he can do a lot of damage especially in if you have no other options huntress is needed for Ephesians, so keep a copy of her and i think that's about it no spike head is also needed for Ephesion. keep a copy in your vault and no other one Radar is also needed for Fusion. Rising Fusion, I think. Um, Demon Spawn. Let's head over to the rares in Demon Spawn. You get a lot of Diabolist. If you want to, if you want a speed booster, you don't have an Apothecary. You can maybe build this champion to f five star, not sixty. I don't think she's worth taking to sixty, except you want to use her for faction wars. I've seen some people using two of half of faction wars, but by then that's end game faction wars, right? And you maybe have a stun set on her by then, and a lot of speed. So, Fellhound, best campaign farmer in the game, but does require a lot of artifacts, good gear, I mean, crit rate, crit damage to make that happen, and speed. So, that's Fellhound. I've still not built mine because I'm still using Big Gun as my campaign farmer, but if you're looking for somebody to 6 second campaign, 7 seconds campaign, not that 20 seconds you're currently doing right now, he's your guy, but you need good gear on him. And that's about it. I tried to use this guy in... Um, <laughs> He steals. I like this skill where he has a 50% chance of stealing all buffs from a target. Do you know what buffs he steal? The shield on that keep, that uh, magic keep. He just steals the shield and put it on himself. I love this champion, but unfortunately, he's really squishy. He does a lot of damage though, but I don't have need for him. So, hey, if you're early game, maybe you want to look at him using him for spirit keep, but you don't know to take it to 60. He's fine at 50. Alright, I hear Abyssal is good, but I've never really used him. And Marquis is also good, but they are not really um, champion you need right now for the early game. Um, the next one is what? Undead Hordes. I hope I don't miss a faction. Now, this is my second best faction because of Frozen Banshee. She's one of the best early game poisoner, end game poisoner that you ever need. So, I currently still use mine. For dragon, okay, maybe I currently I changed that to Occult Brawler. I feel like Occult Brawler places more poison than her for the dragon. But she is awesome if you can give her enough speed. She will place her poison sensitivity, then place two poisons, then place two poisons again before the dragon can even take a turn. But that's, that's if she's fast enough. But if she's not fast enough, that poison sensitivity will count down one turn before you, before you can even place the poisons. So she's an awesome champion. I really really like this champion, Frozen Banshee. If you get her she's better than kale no doubt so once i got my frozen banshee i took kale out of the nightmare um clan boss but if you're currently doing brutal clan boss normal clan boss you can use your poisoner or your normal campaign farmer and frozen banshee for those stages all right doom screech is awesome for the faction wars i've never really needed to, to use him anywhere else but i hear he has a good kit it's not a champion i'll take to 60 and for faction wars is also extremely useful and um, that's the two of them i can think of frozen banshee and doom screech a lot of people do say pair frozen banshee with grave chill killer no she's not worth taking to 60 maybe at 50 
but you replace them so fast when you have better epics that's why i don't recommend taking grave chill killer to even 50. all right that's for the undead hearts let's head over to the last no <laughs> the next one dark elves this is where the big hitters belong to i'm talking about cold hearts let's not forget cold heart we need to give her her respect first and mention her name first because of this skill just like Soban Boya, she also depletes the time meter of the target 100%, but she does a lot of damage with it. Not as not um, more damage than Soban Boya could ever do. That's why a lot of people rate this champion so much. If, you, if you're lucky to pull her, Spider, back then from dungeon 15 to 20, a lot of people used to use her to nuke the boss, but right now I don't see her a lot in the dungeon dragon anymore. But for Spider, she's still an MVP. For Fire Knight, she's still an MVP champion. I wouldn't bring her to the ice column though. Alright, um, Paragon, if you're stuck on those spider stages, he's your cheese champion. He can place unkillable on himself and you know he'll be the target and never die. Also for nightmare campaign, a lot of people use this champion to head over there and make him the target while he's unkillable. I also used him to clear that nightmare campaign. So he's a champion that you want to take at 30. Don't level this champion up. He performs fine at 30. His job is fine at 30. Don't put HP and all that on him. You want him to be the target, easy target, but he's fast enough to place unkillable on himself. Those are the two champions I would say are awesome from the Dark Elves. For the early game, when you do have Spirit Host and War Priest, you try to decide who do you want to build. Once you decide for War Priest, Spirit Host just chills there. But she has increased attack that really, really helps your main nuka hit hard. But I wouldn't take her to 60 though. She also has a cleanse for the early dragon stages so that's it the next oh i forgot one champion oh, i would have committed a crime right now painkeeper an awesome champion if you do pull this champion do not use her as food she is needed for an unkillable comp that is maybe uh that requires double manita or even a single manita budget unkillable comps for a single manita so this is a champion you want to keep on till you get that single manita or double one and build that unkillable team for the clan boss that's where she shines right now but she does have other abilities that are useful in dungeon content if you take her to 60. yes that's a champion you want to take to 60 just like old heart all right the next faction i have here is the knight's revenant now this one i can only think of one or two but let's see who they are the first one is Coffin Smasher for the early game if you're looking for somebody to place that decreased attack on the clan boss so you don't take so much damage. A 50% decreased attack just means the clan boss will hit you for less and he also has an HP burn. He is known for that but he falls off from Nightmare campaign, I mean, Nightmare clan boss, Ultra Nightmare. You don't see him being featured a lot because by then you have cha other champions who can do a lot more than he does. So for early game, Brutal, Nightmare, this is your guy and... Um, clan boss i've not seen him being used for dungeons or general content though because of just single target and stuff like that and um coffin smasher and who else renegade yes this champion has a reset skill that you know not a total reset but decreases the cooldown of ally skills by two turns so your allies can get back to their skills fast enough before the next wave so it's best known for being used in teams that have um, a seer or a nook for poison explosion or even a spider team that has a cold heart that just nooks the spider she resets the cold heart skill or reduces the two ton cold heart gets back to that skill again and nooks the spider so so that's where renegade is done is known best known to be used keep a copy of renegade as a reset champion for dungeon content i've not seen a, I've, also, I've also seen a renegade being used in clan boss but that's specific builds that you need check out the deadwood jedi for such a build that has a renegade in the team resetting the skills of the champion so they can have their own killable or whatever ready to go all right that's the champion from mac Mag Majus is needed for fusion. This is needed for fusion. Executioner is a champion that I'm currently building right now to 60 just because of Doom Tower content. Yes, this is a champion you might need for Doom Tower content. There are other options in that secret room, but I decided to use him just to make it secure so I can put it on auto and walk away. So that's a champion later, end game, not right now. Right now, use him as food. He's easily farmable from the campaign. If you finally get to the end game, then you need an executioner. He's in campaign for you to get a copy of. Alright, um, that's the rares from Knight's Revenant. 
the next one is dwarfs the dwarfs faction i built one dwarf in the early game in my back in my day two years ago the dwarf i built for uh, clan boss was bulwark because of this passive whenever he's hit right he has a 30 percent chance of extending the duration of all debuffs on the attacker so if you have poison decrease defense decrease attack on the clan boss and the clan boss hits him all those debuffs go up by an additional turn so they don't fall up so fast i used him all the way till nightmare even in ultra nightmare he was still in my teams be before i got better champions so you want him in the leader slot so he's easily targetable by the clan boss high defense champion and he will really really help increase the damage he also has an hp bond which is either here or there but he is a champion that i know i built along this dwarf i don't think of any other dwarfs that is useful except master butcher now this one is an more of an end, end game content right especially for the doom tower i see him currently being used these days now for even secret rooms right so he's needed for secret rooms he's needed for secret um general wave content also for some bosses like the boomer i see him being used in the boomer boss where some people could not get past it until they built a master butcher or two of him because of his skill that he has that makes him almost unkillable i guess um those are the two dwarfs that i see are worth it i've seen dilgo being used for some stuff but i wouldn't recommend like unless you are building that specific uh, specific comp um all right that's dwarfs shadow king I do not know anything about, about the Shadow King rares, I'll be honest, because they are kind of new. So out of all the Shadow King rares, none catches my eye. None will I build to 50. So I have been using them as food all the entire time. So you seeing all other rares that are more useful, maybe you want to read out their skills and find out if anyone will serve your purpose, but I don't think they are um, that useful Yes, We are still waiting for that awesome Shadow King um, rare champion that will be as good as war maiden or be as good as all these other ones that we've mentioned that have something we need for the early game but i don't know so i'm not gonna waste your time by checking out their skills but hey let me know if you use any of the shadow kings for anything special right now all right before we do end this video we've talked about all the rares that are useful and i've picked out the ones that i would take to 50 i told you the ones that what 16 now you know what to keep and what not to keep again i'll remind you that if you have a champion from a specific um, faction, right? Let's say Dark Elves. You might want to keep duplicates of Dark Elves, not use them all as food, just because Briggs says so. So again, I'll show you this as a reason. Even if I say Spirit Host is trash, right? Even if I say Cold Heart, I just need one. Even if I said um, Kale, I don't need him. Look, he's sitting right there doing a job for me doing job for my cold heart because all the purpose of all of them here is because i needed more hp more attack more speed three speed for my cold heart so that's another way you could use them besides just use them using them as food in the early game keep them as your faction guardians you need that extra stat boost for your champions all right you guys let me know in the comments below which rares that i totally skipped out on or i'm sleeping on um, I always look forward to the pro gamers out there who have been playing the game as long as I have been or playing it more than I have been to always make those corrections for me in the comments below. I'm looking forward to those uh, feedback. Also, if you're a newer player and you find this video useful, all you can do to help this channel is hit that like button right now before you click out of the video. Also, hit that subscribe button. I do both new content for newer players and also end game content most times so i mix it up a little bit so today i just wanted to focus on rares that are worth taking to 60 that are worth saving for the end game for later so you don't end up looking for them later i guess this is the best time for me to remind you there is currently a giveaway going on on this channel i have an end game account that i'm currently trying to give out when we hit the 3000 subscriber mark on youtube right now i think we're currently at 2000 um 700 or so so we are kind of close so i announced it i'll pin it above here so you can check out the account all the champions that are in in there was shown ninjas seer um, man eater you have everything you need on that account you just need to farm the gear and build it so it will benefit both newer players who are coming in and also maybe end game player who needs it but i'll prefer somebody who has been playing the game for a week or two a month or two to win that account so no special criteria all you have to do is hit that subscribe button and message me on discord 
or in the general chat on Discord, making your um, making your <laughs> notice that you intend to participate in the giveaway. So that will be all that is needed. Again, check out that um, account on all the channels on and all the champs that are featured there. Hope you guys like this video. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Even if you're an endgame player, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later, guys.